All right, guys, this is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long, and I'm here today. I'm going to do a segment on exposing uh, Tika Tuari and the Palm Beach Investment Group on their pick of FLGC. As a lot of people or everybody should know by now, I was the investigator, the lead investigator that actually went to the site in Bucaramanga, Colombia, to expose the, FL, the Florida growth FLGC facilities, the cultivation facility. FLGC is a cannabis cultivation company um, that's involved with other cannabis products, and uh, they're located in Colombia. Um, the reason why they're located in Colombia is so people can't go there and find out for themselves what is actually going on. So Stan Barty, a nefarious character that's affiliated was affiliated in the past, has basically made a career out of uh, doing these kind of um, pump and dumps. You know, basically the business model of his would be establish an entity uh, of outside the United States, like for example, a mining facility in, in the Amazon in Brazil that nobody can go to and go after the imaginations of the public and get listed on the NASDAQ. Or I think he's, he was uh, involved with OTC companies in the past. But anyway, um, the stock, let's, so let's look at the screen share here. So I'm doing a podcast, but this is my first like screen share um as well okay then i'm gonna have on youtube so anyone that's looking, listening to the podcast just be aware that this is all on youtube you can see the screen share so florida growth i was in colombia the week uh that it ran crazy i was uh trying to find the site so they did not make it easy to find a site and again i'm re reiterating this but it's all on the florida growth um short report which was put out by white diamond research you can that has extensive detail backing everything up detail evidence you name it it's all on there it's one of the one of the really intricate reports that we've seen in, we haven't seen in a while and this one was on for growth and i was there in person i took a flight from puerto rico uh laid over in panama straight to bucaramanga um anyway it's been on a straight downtrend since, as it should be, because the shareholder shares also unlocked. So on top of it being exposed, the shareholders were dumping into this because they, they ran it up for that reason. And Stan Barty stepped down uh, as one of the directors. He was one of the few, he was the founder basically of Floor Growth. He stepped down so he can dump his, um, his shares because uh, he wouldn't have to file an SEC report if he resigned. So they disguised it as, uh, him stepping down for a NASDAQ diversity initiative, but that was just a cover up. He basically just resigned to dump his shares. And again, that's all in the short report. I'm just going over this briefly um, now just to, to be a refresher. But yeah, oh, and also, what else is Stan Barty? Oh, yeah, Stan Barty also has ties to the Wolf of Wall Street, um, Jordan Belfort back in the day, where they were, they were like uh, trying to basically dwindle, you know, uh, Larry King. They have, there's a photo of him out there. And again, I have a whole, if you look at the Friendly Bear Research YouTube channel, you can see all of the videos of my trip. You can see my in encounter with um, the executive of agriculture, the VP of agriculture of Floor Growth. And, um, you know, everything is there. You can even see uh, the photos with uh, Jordan Belfort and Stan Barty with Larry King you know, back in the day. So yeah, he's, he's a very shady character, like involved with the Wolf of Wall Street at the peak, you know, when he before he got arrested back in the, in the days, the 80s and 90s. But anyways, let's get into it now. So Tika Tawari. Tika Tawari caused this uh, FLGC to run on Friday. So if you see, where's that chart again? Oh, okay. So Friday, if you look at this chart, FLGC all of a sudden popped up on a lot of volume out of nowhere after a straight downtrend in the middle of the day. And uh, it was brought to my attention that Tiko Tawari was, was uh, involved with this. And Tiko Tawari is the head of the Palm Beach Investment Group. And uh, normally I wouldn't go after someone like this, you know, like calling them out unless I had like solid evidence. But like, th this is the case that I do have the solid evidence because I was physically there at, at the floor of growth facilities. I am the guy, one of the, probably one of the only ones, only person that outside of Flora Growth, the board members and, and whoever's involved with the company that actually visited the site. Because to get up there is 
such a, uh, it's, it's, it's really hard. It's a three hour journey, motor, motorbike journey. Um, in dirt roads, rain, mud, uh, the roads are very narrow. I describe everything all in my YouTube channels and the short report, every, like again, everything is there. Um, but yeah, Bucaramanga, let's look at the map over here. Bucaramanga, where flora growth uh, marijuana facilities are, it's in Bucaramanga. It's not in Bogota. You know, so Tika Tuari says he went to Bogota to the jungles of Colombia to check out flora growth uh, facilities. It is not there. Bogota is very far away from Bucaramanga. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a straight up lie. Um, let's look at that again. Okay, so he says here, okay, you can read this for yourself. But it says that, okay, blah, blah, blah. That's why I told my team to dedicate all our attention to finding the top player in the space. After months of due diligence, tramping through the jungles on foot, being driven around in armored vehicles and meeting with the premier players along with the supply chain, we identified our top pick, Flora Growth. At the time we, we left Flora, we felt Flora had the potential to grow into the largest, most profitable cannabis company in Colombia, and that's exactly what happened. Currently, Flora's market cap is over, okay, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, he said he went there. All he has is one photo of him with, um, of a Colombian police. There's no other photos. If you went and, and looked at Flora's facilities, we need to see some photos. We need to see some photos. I provided a lot of photos. I was there. I provided photos, videos, interactions with one of the executives at the site. And Tika Tuari has nothing. So he did not, he did not visit Bucaramanga. He did not. If, we, if, if he visited Bucaramanga, why doesn't he show pictures? He didn't show pictures. So if you look again... Um, he says stuff that we already know, um, the key acquisitions. So here, this is, okay, let's see, Vessel Brand. Okay, so meanwhile, in the U.S., this is like where super, okay, here we go. Recently purchased Vessel Brand, a smoking and vaping accessories brand. Vessel is known for innovative creations, compass vape, unlike blah, blah, blah. The Vessel Brand is growing rapidly. Okay, so let's shut that down. Let's shut it down. So, so I can't believe that this guy has such a big following uh, with the Palm Beach Investment Group, which, by the way, lures in um, older people to, to do. To, he's, he's pumping the stock to old people, basically, you know, so because Palm Beach is a big retired community. I know because like my mom lives there and she's retired. And like the few times I've been there, it's, it's basically a, a huge retirement community. So he's named his website after the retirement community. Palm Beach Investment Group. It has a nice coat of arms. There's an app that goes with it. And he charges like three to five grand for the subscription. And I think a $200 monthly where he just sends you probably the same exact uh, stuff that he sends everybody else. He just puts that as a lower option. But anyway, let's shut this down. So Vessel Brand, Flora Growth had a letter of intent uh, to acquire Vessel Brand. And they did that on August 16th or 17th. At the top of my head, uh, I got to check. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the, the image of that from the SEC file. But um, a letter of intent is not an acquisition. A letter of intent is not an acquisition. And they said it's a letter of intent uh, for, to purchase Vessel Brand for cash and or shares. And most likely it would have been shares because that's, you know, that's what they all do. So the stock was, was at its highest in the year after the huge pump, when I was in Colombia, I was in Bucaramanga that day, um, it pumped to 21 or 22. You can see the chart. So this day right here, it hit 21, 21.30, something like that. And all the way from its run up below $3. I remember like earlier in the year, let's see. From yeah, like around $3. 282 was the year low, pumped all the way to 21 in a jiffy. And the day of the, the hit 21, you can see right here, August 16th. If you look at the screen share in the bottom, August 16th. And um, August 16th was when they sent out the letter of intent to purchase Vessel Brand. Now let's see that, that image for the, from the SEC file. Okay. They did not purchase it. It was the letter of intent. If you see right here, Flores signed a letter of intent to acquire 100% Vessel Brand 
for 30 million in, comp in combination of cash and the issue in the floor common shares. This was August 17th, you can see right there. What did I, we just review, August 16th was the top. So August 17th was the day it dumped. And then a couple of days after that, it fell under $10. Now, if you think about that for a second, what if Vessel Brand would have um, done the deal? Remember, the deal was never done. Latika Tuari is saying the deal was done. The deal was never done. But what if they would have done it and they would have gotten a lot of shares at $20 a share? And then three days later, the stock dumps because it's, it's, uh, it's inflated. It's inflated artificially. This is a pump. Um, remember, this, this thing was a pump and dump. They were sending out like ruthlessly email pumps, um, all types of pumping going on. Um, so a couple of days later, it falls below 10. So Vessel Brand would have got screwed. So Vessel Brand's deal, it never went through. So what, what Tika Tawari is saying here, about Vessel Brand, it's absolutely false. Where does it say? Uh, yeah, right here. So Vessel Brand is not true. I hate to break it to you. Vessel Brand is not true. It didn't happen. The, the acquisition never happened. And Tika Tuari never went to Bukaramanga. Tika Tuari is, uh, is a nefarious character trying to pump the stock for himself. Who knows what he's doing? Now let's go over Tika Tuari. So whoever, was able to buy that. I mean, whoever bought FLGC on Friday for that uh, Tika, Tika Tuari's pump, they need to get a refund. Now, it's too bad. I'm, I looked at the, what do you call it, Tika Tuari's refund policy. He doesn't have one. You know, that's why stock picks are not the way to go. You're not supposed to get stock picks from people, you know? So he, he doesn't have a refund policy. Everyone's going to, you know, looks like they're stuck. Um, I looked at the reviews over here for Tika. They're not too good. He's full of garbage. Tika is a scam. Uh, he's a scammer, sucking money out of your account like a good scam. Scammer, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> but uh, you know, he's been doing this for years. Um, I heard from someone a while ago that when Bitcoin was going crazy, he was doing like a one million dollar giveaway or one million Bitcoin giveaway or something like that. And the deal was, you sign up for his course for three grand. And he gives you five hundred dollars. Now he gets a whole ton of people to sign up for three grand and gives away five hundred dollars so many times that it's gonna hit a million. But that's not a million dollar giveaway. That's more like a that's a basically a scam. So Tika Tuari is not is not an honest guy over here. So yeah, uh Bukaramanga and Colombia is very far away from Bogota. You, like I flew into Bukaramanga because I was like, man, if I buy into Bogota or made a ying, how am I gonna get over there? So I had to fly in over there. Um, Bukaramanga is more like a smaller town. And to get into it a little more, it's like, okay, so FLGC, do I have it on this map? No, but it's somewhere, somewhere here in the mountains, Motoso. Okay, so I was in Motoso, a little town on the way to the, into the site of Flora Growth. It's hidden, it's over here, it's, it's hidden. Oh, they took it out. It was called Ficna Canta La Vieja, but I think they took it out since they saw the short report. But anyways, Giron is a smaller town on the way to the site of, of uh, Flora Growth. I stayed over here in uh, Bucaramanga, one of these hostels here. Florida Blanca is another little town, but Giron. So Tika, the re I'm going over this, you know, but um, Tika Tawari did not go here. He did not go here. And you need to go here in order to access for growth. That's just bottom line. And uh, maybe he sees this. Tika Tawari, I would like to talk to you. You know, let's go over it. Let's go over your trip over there. I know I know the logistics of everything. So um, what else? Uh, the re refund policy we went over. His website, that's him right here. Seems kind of sketch, you know, like people feeding pics to old people. Okay, so here's the prices. You have the two hundred dollar one, five thousand, and it's expensive. Four thousand, five thousand. It's expensive, but um, just to get those little pop ups, like this is what people are paying for for him to send these alerts, um, through his app, and uh, basically pump the stock. Um, now the uh, one last thoughts. 
Okay, so he waited for the stock to hit under $5. So Friday, it hit under five for the first time. It was a Friday as well. So Fridays, things can run. Um, and he pushed it into the close, you know? He pushed it into the close on, on, to his subscribers. Uh, so that's that, you know? Try to get a refund if you bought this, if you bought his subscription. Tika Tawari's not telling the truth. He did not go to Bukaramanga. He didn't visit the site. Uh, you can go visit my YouTube channel right here. It has everything from the site. And, I, you know, I even have way more material. I documented everything. This is just like the best stuff that I, that I put out. But I, I have everything documented to the T, like probably like a thousand photos. I give my debriefing here as well when it's fresh in my head right after the trip um, with a rep from White Diamond Research. And yeah, I encourage you to look at that. And I think I made also a few podcasts. Let's see. On the Friendly Bear podcast, which is on all platforms. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Number 28, 27, and the short report announcement. While, it's fresh, while it's straight from the site. I think I, that was a couple of days after I came back from the site. So it was, it was really fresh in my head. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, give a warning to everybody who, who uh, signed up for Tika Tuari. He's a straight up liar. You gotta, you gotta try to get a refund or something. But yeah, that sums it up. Thanks for listening to the Friendly Bear podcast.